Welcome to the chapter 22 of the discussion today which is on organizational structure and design. In this chapter we are going to learn about the what is organizational structure and what are the different design options present in the organization, what is the difference between organizational structure and uh, design and different types of design and what are the variables affecting design and how design affects organizational performance and other things. So, as an objective of this chapter, we are having to develop an understanding of organizational structure and design, key elements for organizational structure which are work specialization, departmentalization, chain of command, span of control, centralization and decentralization, formalization and organizational structure, its determinants and outcomes, organizational designs and employee behavior, changes in designing and organizational structure, organizational designs, Indian organizations, empowerment styles in Indian perspective, restructuring Indian organizations, what are the challenges and responses to it, impact of culture on Indian business organization. So, this will be the whole uh, span of the discussion and in the first we are going to cover about organizational structure and different aspects or the key elements of organizational structure and some of its determinants and outcomes in the first lecture. So, to start off with we will try to define what is organizational design and what is organizational structure. Design is something when uh, managers make a conscious um, effort to think of how to do things in the organization and how employees will do their work. That aspect is called design. How in what ways employees will be interacting with each other, how they will be placed in their hierarchies and um, what will be the relationship amongst the employees, how will they access the resources when this thought process goes on in the manager's mind, this is called um, organizational design and to uh, the main part of that design is that is known as organizational structure. So, when we are talking of organizational structure, it is the anatomy part of the design. It is defined as the stable relationships um, and processes of the organization and structure is defined as the stable relationship and processes of the organization as a whole it is told to be the anatomy of the organization uh, or the framework of the organization. So, it focuses on different things like what are the different um, positions in the organization, what are the different functions of the organization, how, how rules and procedures are to be formulated and uh, who, who like how to prescribe authority. These are certain things which comes under like when you are talking of organizational structure and it is used mainly to um, regulate the behavior of the employees and so that uncertainty is reduced in the organization. People know their reporting relationships, they know where to procure resources from. So, uncertainty is reduced through when you are talking of organizational structure and, the, and there is some robot of control like when we are talking of with respect to employee behavior. So, of individual employees. So, that, that is what the organizational structure is. So, we can tell like organizational structure um, defines how formally jobs are defined and placed in organization and how tasks are divided, grouped and, um, and coordinated, coordination amongst the different tasks. 
Now there are certain key elements of organizational structure um, which are based on um, certain design questions. The key elements are like work specialization, uh, departmentalization, uh, span of control, unity of command and um, centralization, decentralization and formalization. These are like um, some of the key elements of organizational um, structure. Now, when we ask the question like what is the um, relevant design questions for which um, this um, structure is the answer, we find like when we ask the design question like um, to what degrees uh, your activities will be subdivided into um, separate jobs. The answer that we get for it is work specialization. Like to what extent like should they be divided into small spa parts of jobs or subdivided. So work specialization is the answer for it. When we are thinking of like on what basis the jobs will be divided, what is that on what basis on which the jobs will be divided, the answer for it just like the answer for this design question is departmentalization. When we are thinking of like to whom the individuals and the groups will be reporting, what is the reporting relationship, then the answer from the structure side is that of chain of command. When we are thinking of like you know, how many individuals can a manager control at a particular point of time, then the answer is of course span of control. And like what is that number of employees which managers can direct at a, effectively direct at a particular point of time? Answer is of course span of control. When we are talking of where does the decision making authority lie? So it is like it, we are talking of centralization and decentralization. When we are talking of like to what degree there will be rules and regulations in the organization and um, to direct the employees and to the managers, we are talking of formalization. So these are the different design questions and their relevant answers from the organizational structure side. What we will do now is we will try to visit each of um, these structures separately and tr the, uh, each of these key elements of the structure separately try to find out the details of it and then like we try to relate it later on to the different design options when we will try to learn about organizational designs. So firstly, we will try to see what we mean by work specialization. Work specialization means the degree to which like the work is um, or the task in the organization is um, subdivided into separate jobs. Uh, what is done over here? Like if there is a um, big part of the job if, if you are trying to make a product. So do we divide it into small parts and tell like only the, each of them uh, together like done separately and then assemble together we will make the product or not. Because uh, it is not possible uh, in many cases to go for this like designing the whole product at a particular time. So um, what is done over here is the whole particular task at hand is divided into um, uh, subdivided 
into small small separate jobs and what what happens over here is it and then the and this is also called division of labor in the sense which makes efficient use of um, employee skills and efficient use of employee skills increase employee skills through um, repetition because in job specialization what is done a bigger task is um, broken into um, small small jobs and each employee based on their own skills that they are best at for uh, doing a particular job or placed at each of the jobs because it is true that all employees do not have the same skill to do all jobs in same way people differ in their skills and their expertise so specialization in work specialization what is done in the job is divided and the employees based on the skills like which they are best at are placed in these different jobs so what happens is that it utilizes the efficiency of the um, employees in a much better way and because of doing a repetitive work day in and day out they also can improve in their work by because it becomes a part of habit and practice and they know how to do it in a better way and that that is what where it does like it employee increases employee skills third is like when you are talking of terms of errors committed and loss making so there there is less of downtime in this as uh, because people know how to do this thing and they are like familiar with doing the same thing again and again and it increases the productivity and so when we get specialized training for doing certain things it becomes more effective and efficient and uh, uh, people learn also use of specialized equipments um, so this when work specialization is there you find there is a increased productivity but this part of the organizational structure um, element of the organizational structure has a flip side to it also like doing the same job day in and day out me increase stress boredom in the members because they don't have uh, new things to learn and they don't get any like excitement from doing the job itself so they know like when to begin when to end as a routine repetitive type of job so maybe sometimes they get disinterested in the job itself and which may lead to decrease in productivity as errors try to creep in at the, this point of time so as a result of that again sometimes in the late 1960s new design options like job enlargement came up where people got exposure of mm, different Uh, types of things to be done and so that you can learn new things so what we can see over here is it is not that job specialization or work specialization should be done away with because of the boredom stress and other factors that is generated uh, nor it is it always leads to increase in productivity so or it can be applied to all sorts of job so what we have to do is we have to see the nature of the work the things that it demands and then we have to find out like what degree of specialization is required for this type of job and beyond which maybe specialization is not required some enlargement or like exposure to other types of works works better over here so that judgment has to be made by the manager or the top people of the organization to know if we need work specialization then what for what type of job 
and to what extent next uh, we come to a discussion about departmentalization departmentalization is the basis by which um, jobs are grouped together in the organization so if we can understand jobs are grouped together either by functions or by the um, products or by the um, process of um, doing things like when we are talking of jobs are grouped together by <coughs> products means organized or, or it could be departmentalization could be based on geography also so when it is first by function then different functional areas like engineering is one division manufacturing is one maybe sales is another so all the functions are different and departmentalization is done according to that so for making a particular product what happens these functions provide support to making all the products a b and c whatever that company makes next is type of departmentalization is by a, is departmentalization by the product when we want when the organization wants to concentrate more on the product and wants its product to make a place in the consumer's mind then what happens like each of the products are given emphasis and the uh, the departmentalization is made according to the products and all the functional facilities are under each of these products that type of division is called product division each product is placed under a particular manager and he takes care of these products and all the functions like sales marketing manufacturing everything is put for this this functions get repeated for each of the products so each of the product line has its own um, set of functional people next is when we are talking of um, geographic departmentalization so this is maybe due to the uh, market that we want to enter special nature of the market in which um, the demand is there for the product and we are the competitors present around that all these features may influence the decision of like whether to make the product uh, whether to go for a product best thing functional best thing uh, or departmentalization should be like geography best so when you're talking of geography best then according to geographic locations all the mm, all the division is made and there is a top person who takes care of that mm, geography to see that whether the mm, business is growing in that part of the mm, that part of the country so <clears throat> that departmentalization is called departmentalization according to geography when we are talking of uh, departmentalization according to the um, process then then it so happens like there is a mix of the um, uh, whole thing of the um, the products and the functions and it is a called a process departmentalization so um, also like it could be other ways of departmentalization could be based on the nature of customers whom you are addressing to and the like um, authority also uh, but mainly these four the functions the um, 
functions the then the product the geography and the process of the main four ways of departmentalization and um, this takes of this takes care of the process of departmentalization takes care of things which are called the complexity in the organization when you are talking of complexity in the organization it is the degree of um, like how many distinctly different um, job titles are there so um, that is what we are focusing into and number of groupings and um, number of like distinctly different units and departments and what we can uh, talk of like either there is a um, horizontal differentiation or um, whether it is a vertical differentiation so when you are talking of horizontal differentiation it is the number of units at the same level when you are talking of vertical differentiation it is the number of levels in the particular organization so either you are going for a tall structure or you are going for a, um, a flat structure so horizontal differentiation and vertical differentiation these are the two defining qualities of departmentalization next when what you are looking into is like mm, mm, mainly now what happens is process departmentalization is becoming more important for organizations which are mm, mm, which are addressing the needs for the particular customers so what they do is they take in you know, customers need and they try to process it they make it, the product move to various departments and then you get the, like um, product which is designed or made for the customer so um, this is um, also known and when you are uh, targeting a particular type of customer so um, these are also customer based departmentalization like the segment of customer that you want to reach each of your products is defined according to them and that is called customer based departmentalization so in nutshell departmentalization is the division of the division or grouping of jobs based on certain parameters which could be function which could be product or the service which could be the geography and which could be the customer which could be the process what will be the nature of departmentalization of course it is defined by what the organization wants to focus on what is the job at hand how it wants to specialize how it tries to answer its customer base all these factors next we come to the discussion on the say um, third part of this one the key elements of um, organizational structure which is called chain of commands in chain of commands um, the most um, important part of discussion is that of authority like uh, how that um, authority is spelled from the top to bottom it it started with is um, and when we are talking of chain of command it is an unbroken uh, chain of command from top to bottom when we are talking of uh, and um, we are talking discussing 
chain of command with respect to two things. First is the unity of command and the second of um, that of authority. When we are talking of chain of command, it is uh, and also you are talking of unity of command means only a subordinate has only one boss and the instructions follow from that boss and that is called unity of common and when you are talking of authority means by virtue of the position that the manager is in in a particular organization that position gives the person some formal authority to control the behavior of the subordinates that is called authority to oversee the behavior of the subordinates to give directions so that authority comes from that that is a formal authority which comes directly from the position that the manager joins in the organization now uh, what with unity of command so person knows like he or she has to answer to the instructions of only one boss which sometimes reduces complexity and less of for stressful for the individual as compared to when a, in a situation where a person has to work under two bosses and if this boss which sometimes happens in matrix organization now when this is the situation a person has to work under two bosses and if these bosses are having conflicting demands that they make from the employees then the employees become stressful so unity of command is preferred in that way but it also means information is flowing very slowly from top to bottom if there is one person reporting and to only another person and we in our present um, uh, situation organizational situation what we find like because of network structure where all person are connected with each other information from the top to the other people in the lower organ level of the organization it reaches very fast due to this networking process because all are connected with each other and they can share information with each other like through different channels of um, horizontal up or down or vertical diagonal um, communication pattern so that's why like even if it is less stressful the chain of command when you talk of unity of command maybe it is um, somewhat not practiced to that extent today in present organization where we are moving more towards teamwork where each of the employees are connected to each other and we have lot of help from the technology which helps to maintain connectivity because sharing of information fast completion of work individuals take able to take their own decisions or what like people are, is the work pattern people are believing in now next we move on to a discussion on the next part of um, the key element which is a very important element which is called span of control in span of control what happens when you are talking of span of control it defines like how many employees can a person control at a particular point of time so this exactly is defined by the nature of the job if you can understand like if the nature of the job is such which is like less of complexity in nature and less complex jobs with more sort of routine activity less of guidance is required less of uncertainty is required maybe people have large span of control you can control many people at a particular point of time 
but when it is so like the nature of job is complex in nature you have to give one to one guidance you have to share one to one information and maybe you have to monitor whether people are doing their jobs properly or not and try to make them learn things so in those cases maybe it is not possible to guide <coughs> or take care of too many people at a time so in the, those cases the span of control will be less as compared to the span of control when for a job which is of like less complex in nature what we find over here is like um, when again other factors like which defines the the span of control and the factor which is important like the physical placement of the um, workers so if the uh, workers are doing a simple task are physically placed close to each other and and needs needs little coordination from the manager then um, manager spends little times for planning for them and maybe they they are they could be controlled by a larger span of control so in that case like in span of control what is most important is the frequency of the actual relationship which is important rather than the total number of relationships what is important over um, here is like the two factors which are what is the what questions we can ask is what is the required number of um, contacts which is required so if the task is more ambiguous in nature and then what happens maybe it requires more interaction so more contact is needed like what is the degree of specialization so if as already discussed like if people are doing less complicated job the managers may be able to oversee more people at particular time the ability to communicate so clear communicators can manage more people so it depends on the nature of the industry and the type of the job so of which and the manager who is playing the role uh, to do all these factors define what will be the span of control what is the complexity of the function what is the degree of planning required what is the degree of um, coordination required for a particular job whether there is a geographic continuity or their place geographically apart then whether there are similarity of functions or not all these things will try to define the degree of span of control for a particular manager so again if we find like there is a tall organizational chart means with greater height which means there is a less span of control if we have a flat organizational structure which means there is a um, broader span of control in the, at the same level there are different units different different people more people at the same level and then um, this is greater span of control so um, how do the subordinates interact with the managers as a part of span of control is something it is direct where um, the managers are no face to face the employees and they want to um, communicate with them and also um, when there, there, there is a cross communication amongst the employees they like when there is a bigger greater span of control 
then employees try to communicate with each other because they have so many uh, peers uh, amongst them at the same level they can communicate with each other second third is there could be communication between groups of subordinates like if there is a large span of control groups the people are from groups and the, there could be communication between groups of subordinates so the different types of interaction which takes place Graecunus he gave a particular formula of what could be the number of interactions in a uh, particular organizational setup which we can link to uh, organizational which we can link to the span of control in the organization so that formula is stated by um, i is equal to n multiplied by 2n by 2 minus n minus 1 that is the formula i is equal to n multiplied by 2n by 2 minus n minus 1 that is the formula which defines the span of control where i is the number of interactions and n is the number of subordinates <coughs> When we are talking of again how many managers, how what should be the span of control for managers at a particular level, Ralph Davis pointed out that for operating level managers the maximum span of control is 30 to 30 workers and at the executive level for middle managers and top managers so at that level it is 3 to 9 subordinates beyond that the span of control um, it breaks down it's not possible to control beyond that level what are the different um, determinants of appropriate span of control are like we cannot say like um, different factors which are influencing the span of management it can also be called as the different factors which are influencing the span of management are like your, what is called the competency of the supervisors and the subordinates. If the subordinates are competent enough to uh, do their things by on their own, span of control will be large. In a sense, you don't have to give individualized attention to the um, subordinates, but if they are not that competent enough and they need one to one guidance maybe span of control will be small so it depends on the competency of the manager and the subordinate first like what will be the span of control in a particular organization second is physical dispersion of subordinates if they are widely spread then maybe span of control will be small but if they are closely placed then span of control will be large then um, degrees of interaction required with the followers whether it's close interaction required or distant interaction also can help like the time frequency of the interactions required also the what is the extent of non-supervisory jobs in the manager's work so which will help to define what is the time that the manager can spend for this supervision part and if like all the employees have to have at least one discussion with him then what is the proper span of control for that next is the what is the frequency of new problem coming up and do 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 this does it require like a discussion has to be made amongst the employees so all these factors will define the span of control so what are the like um, drawbacks of narrow span of control is sometimes we spend extra on defining uh, new layers of um, people like when you're talking of a very narrow span of control so additional layers of uh, levels of management 
So there is an increased communic uh, complexity of vertical communication who will um, pass on the um, message to whom, where the um, communication block is there, whether messages are withheld or not. So these problems will come up. Next, um, it encourages very tight supervision, um, um, employee supervision by the manager and less of employee autonomy where can they can decide to some extent how to do a particular job. So these could be the some of the disadvantages of a narrow span of control. Next we try to find out what are the important factors which defines strategy and and define structure and what and the one of the key factors of course key elements to continue with are, are, are the um, centralization and which, which is one of the main aspects of design is centralization and decentralization when we are talking of centralization and um, decentralization so um, these are called like where the power is concentrated in the organization. So if it is uh, like centralization, it is the location of the decision making authority in the hierarchy of the organization. So in like so it, it, it's like the um, it's centrally located, all the decisions are taken centrally and it is then passed on to the um, lower um, layers or the members of the organization. So, um, it is the degree to which centralization, it's the degree to which decision making power is centralized at a particular point in the um, organization. When we are, um, or maybe all is centrally located or if, if there is a departmentalization according to the geography, it is located at the region office of the particular geography. When you are talking of decentralization, decentralization is the degree to which decision making is spread throughout the organization. So, this both has advantages and disadvantages when you are talking of centralization so if like when the all the major decisions are centralized then what happens there is a less chance of misinterpreting facts according to own understanding and misrepresentation of it to the external world there is central centralized system which takes care of everything which is there regarding the product, its design and the market and everything and also for the employees in the organization. But when there is a great geographic span, people are spread across the products have like um, are in different range. So what happens at that point of time and we are working in um, markets which are having a differential demand. So sometimes it could be any of the reasons or all of them working together like some people may go for decentralization. So why decentralization giving some powers to others to decide till a particular um, level of accountability will help to make decisions fast and answer to the demands of the market quickly. Otherwise, what happens if everything is centralized, then it will take time to for the request to generate and come to the central office and get, get sanctioned and get ultimately the um, benefit of that sanction and to get the decision for it. By that time, the maybe demands of the outside environment is um, no longer existing. The customers may have changed their mind and we have moved to the competitors finding like their answers are not um, their queries have not been answered 
within a particular time. So, to you know, hasten the process to make it more easy and timely. So, what happens and to make the top management less burdened from taking decisions regarding every petty small things of the organization. So, decentralization could be the answer. But again, we have to take care of have a balance of like to understand what decision is to be centralized and what it is to be decentralized. If something, some decision is very crucial to the functioning of the organization or important for the functioning of the organization, those should be centralized. Because in decentralization, there, there could be chances of misinterpreting the things according to their own needs or understanding and different versions may come out of what was of what are the rules and how to make decisions about it, how to make decisions in for different um, situations coming up based on the managerial acumen the managers present at different levels and the employee's own discretion. So, um, because it will matter, the differences will matter. So, some very important decisions which are crucial to the functioning of the organization um, should be centralized and what could be decentralized to some extent and what, what level that the organization has to fix up for a smooth running of the organization, fast answering of employee queries and their needs, those things could be decentralized. Next, we look into the determinants of organizational structure and its outcomes. So, strategy of the organization, the technology of the organization, the size of the organization and the um, technology, the environment, the, all these uh, define structural designs and um, like the cultural norms present, the whether it is a mechanistic organization or not, all these things or, or organic organizations, these things come up and um, influence like uh, or results from the interactions of these factors when we are talking of organizational structure and the determinants of organizational structure. We will try to look into details for each of these determinants separately. First, we will try to focus on the um, strategy of the organization like why do organizations differ because of their strategy. What are the different strategies which are there in the organization? The different strategies which are there in the organization are like we can just see to the things. like we have innovation um, innovation strategy which is taking care of the innovations made in the organization and which focuses on the introduction of major new products and services in the organization when we are talking of cost minimization strategy it is a strategy that emphasizes on tight cost control, then avoidance of unnecessary innovation or marketing expenses and price cutting. When we are talking of imitation strategy, it is a strategy that seeks to move into new products and new markets only after the visibility has already been or the viability has already been proven. Now, the relationship between the strategy and structure is that when we are talking of like um, 
uh, this um, innovation strategy it um, it it is more into like um, more of an organic nature why because organic nature of the organization it supports innovation creativity uh, it supports creativity in the organization it gives plans for people to interact with each other and communicate with each other so when you're talking of innovation strategy organic structure is the answer to it if it is not if it is a mechanistic organization innovation is not possible like it is not supported by that type of organizational structure when we are talking of like cost minimization strategy it leads to mechanistic structure which is to have some sort of tight control extensive work specialization and high formalization and high decentralization so when you're talking of formalization it is the degree to which there are specified rules and regulations what are the expectations from the employees they are clearly stated and written and what could be for the violations of the stated rules and regulations what are like and it um, and it is effective by enforcing it so this this is called formalization and when we are talking of cost minimization strategy tight formalization tight mechanistic structure are the answers to it when we are talking of imitation as a strategy it is leading to a mix and match of both mechanistic and organic structure mix of loose with tight properties so that like for imitating you need to learn also from the environment you need to like practice see that whether it is working for you or not at the same time like we should try to control the cost related to it and the behaviors of the employees related to it so for that is and what happens like if you are to imitate and we are to bring a product to the market after the viability of it has already been proven then we have to take care of both the things some new features added to it and of also the cost part of it of the products for that a mix of both mechanistic and organic structure is the answer which helps to reach this imitation strategy that is tight control over current activities and loose control over new undertakings next another important factor for which um, organizations differ is size so when the organization becomes more larger in size it becomes more mechanistic because there are a wide number of people different types of jobs like if we do not go for a tight control over it then then everything will run out of hand so what happens which are the characteristics of large organizations are it's more of specialization then next is more vertical levels in the organization and more rules and regulations so until that is defined we cannot bind the organization in the different parts of the organization together so when the organization grew initially it may start as an organic structure but when it goes on adding up adding up to itself in terms of departments different product lines and ways of doing things different strategies taken so what happened maybe different strategies are taken for different products and so what happens when you go on adding up like that mechanistic organization could be the answer for it structures also differ based on technology so technology defines how an organization transfers its input into outputs if it is a like um, characteristics one of the characteristics is that of 
uh, routineness whether it is standardized or customized in its activities. So, routine technologies are associated with tall departmentalized structures and formalization in organization. Routine technologies need to centralization when formalization is low. Non-routine technologies are associated with delegated decision making authority. So, what we find is like decentralization when we are talking of non-routine technologies. Next part like why do structures differ is due to the environment like institutions or forces outside the organization that potentially affect the organization's performance. And the key dimensions of environment are capacity, volatility and complexity. Like when um, degree to which an environment can support the growth, volatility is the degree of instability in the environment, complexity the degree of heterogeneity and concentration among environmental elements. These will define like how the structure will look like. So, we will proceed with this further when we are talking of organizational designs because environment, size, technology these are the factors which define and the strategy these are the factors which define uh, like what will be the particular design for a particular organization. Here we have a mention of this, we will consider this further when we are talking of organizational designs in the next lecture. Thank you.